Hello. Okay, here we are. Welcome, everybody, as people file in. No problem. Take your seat. Um, I'm Beth Liebert. I'm head of product at MapSense. This is Nick, our chief data scientist. And MapSense is kind of one of the new kids on the block. This is our first time at State of the Map. Um, thanks for having us. We've learned a lot already from the sessions. Uh, MapSense is a, is a mapping technology company focused on amazing data visualization for maps. We released some developer tools, our first public release last week. Um, it's free to sign up. We've been, we were founded about two years ago and have been working with enterprise clients on visualizing their large geographical data sets. And we're excited to be able to bring some of the same technology we've used with them to developers across the world. Now we're all here because of OpenStreetMaps and we use it in different ways and contribute to it in different ways. We took the OpenStreetMaps history data set and ingested it into our systems to see what we could learn from it. And to answer questions like, what does the OSM community look like? What do they like to add? And how is that changing over time? This is our team. We're about 15 of us, if you count our head of recruiting. Uh, we're based in San Francisco. We like to bike. We like to hike. We like to play music. Nick is a drummer. Um, and we love maps. We, you know, a lot of us have seen this graph. This is kind of where we started. The graph of OpenStreetMap users, healthy, steady growth up and to the right, just crossed two million. But this, of course, doesn't tell us the whole story. Who are these people? Where are they mapping? What do they like to map? How does a city get built over time? These are some of the things we wanted to answer. And so I'll, let, I'll hand it over to Nick to talk about this approach in a second. But ultimately, we wanted to know what does the history of OpenStreetMaps data tell us about us, or the OpenStreetMap community? Thanks, Beth. So uh, just to get the boring stuff out of the way, I'm just going to briefly discuss what went on here and the stack we used to process all of this. So we took the OpenStreetMaps history dump. And it says four terabytes. One of the hardest things about big data is you got to get it from point A to point B very often. So we work in a lot of different compression formats. But I ballpark it in the low terabyte range. Uh, from there, we used uh, Masterminds OSM history importer to load this into PostGIS. Uh, if Masterminds out there, it's an awesome tool. Thank you so much for using it. Uh, in addition to these open source tools, we have a lot of in-house technology at MapSense. We have to develop a lot of stuff to work with data at the scale we do work with. So um, from PostGIS, we used our, our uh, in-house language Sherpa to basically uh, correct a lot of the geometries that get slightly corrupted in the process. And then we write out our own geosequence files, which is a binary key value store of data. Um, from there, the path kind of bifurcates. We uh, talk about the numbers stuff. We loaded this into a Spark cluster. Um, Spark is a top-level Apache product. It's an open source distributed computational engine. So we spun up about 80 cores, dumped the results into S3, which are unfortunately thousands of files, and then uh, did some relatively simple uh, Python pandas stuff, charted up with matplotlib. And uh, I'll talk about the, uh, the pretty map stuff in a little bit. So just to give you an example, something to you know, start thinking about. Uh, here are three American cities, uh, cities I love, cities I've lived in over, uh, over the years. And uh, this is a very different chart than what Beth just showed you. Instead of this nice, smooth, continuous growth, we see that it's very lumpy. There are a lot of spikes. There are a lot of really big imports followed by periods of relatively less activity. And we can drill down on these cities and kind of see what we can glean from it. So New York is actually a pretty typical example. What you see is uh, a moderate level of activity at first, predominantly roads, because you know roads are what people use. You need to see how to get from point A to point B if you're using a map. Then we see, after roads, a big spike in buildings. Buildings seem to come in in huge chunks. And a lot of this is thanks to the Mapbox team who have been, uh, as our previous uh, speaker mentioned, actually working on this in a more professional sense. Uh, if we zoom into DC, it's a very similar trend. You see roads coming in, big spikes in buildings, and then a period of, you know, not so much. Similarly in San Francisco, see roads coming in, roads coming in, roads coming in, big spike in buildings. So after, if we aggregate all of this, we can see pretty much across the board, and these, uh, there are two scales here, so as not to get confused. But uh, you see the purple, the total roads, 
almost uniformly comes in before the buildings on the end. Um, so if this were up to me, all I would show you are charts, but fortunately it's not up to me, so we have cooler visuals coming. Uh, just to talk about how we generated that. So uh, we took those geo sequence files that I spoke of earlier, and we turned them into vector tiles. That allows us, makes them really easy to work with and allows us to do a lot of really fast data work. We then loaded them into our enterprise level product, which we'll show you in a little bit. So that kind of looks like this. This is the import of OSM in New York City. So you can see primarily roads come in first, working in over time, and then all of a sudden there's a huge spike in buildings. And just to stop that animation and give you a chance to look at it. One of the very interesting things uh, we've, we've discovered here is currently we've colored all of this by username. So each color is an individual user. And you can see the vast majority of imports are done by just a few users. If we look at a graph of this, we can actually see that almost all of the imports are, are uh, f five users are responsible for almost the entirety of imports. In fact, that very last spike there is all from RUB21 NYC buildings who did a heck of a job putting that all in there. Um, so we can look at D San Francisco and uh, see, again, a very similar trend. Slow build over time, and then uh, a few very large uh, u users putting in a massive amount of buildings. Again, I'd like to thank Mapbox for doing that, because it's awesome. Um, DC, a very, again, similar pattern. One of the interesting things about DC is one user, uh, odd, is responsible for all of that purple there. And it's actually before the large scale buildings introductions we see in early 2014. He was you know, doing buildings before buildings were cool, basically. And uh, so uh, while we're talking about these individuals and trying to gain more insight into how the OSM community makes maps, uh, because you know maps are really interesting. They're a reflection of how we view the world, of how we think they're interesting. So it's kind of a lens to look at ourselves a little bit. Beth's going to go into that in a bit more detail. Thanks, Nick. One of the things that is so special about OpenStreetMaps and unique about it is it's contributed by the community, and it reflects us. It's something you can really see when you start to dig into the data, not just by the user contributions, but also the points that people add to the map. What are they interested in adding? So we took a look at different tags in, in different cities. Here's San Francisco, where we're from. We like to eat, so that's number one, and then you can see the next couple of categories that are, po uh, that are popular. In Paris, you get a similar Paris of the, the original Paris, we're the Paris of the West, I guess. Um, you see a different sort of profile, restaurants, then benches, then bicycle parking. And it kind of makes, creates an image of a person, of this like French person who's like eating at this lovely bistro, and then they ride their bike, and, and then they go like hang out at a bench somewhere, like this is the guy I picture right here. And I apologize to any Parisians out there. Um, Mumbai, you get a different profile. Places of worship rises to the top. And then in New York City, amazingly, bicycle parking is actually the number one tag here. Uh, <laughs> we had some people bike uh, to the event last night from, from our hotel nearby. Um, we dug into the biking thing a little, and we noticed that there's a huge spike in edits to cycleways, bike paths, in New York City once city bikes launched. It actually correlates very nicely. I think it reflects that OSM reflects our world, not just the physical world, but events in the world, what is interesting people, uh, people over time in the world. And you can see that both in the map and you can see when it becomes relevant to map it. We can also look at global trends. What tags are popular in different parts of the world? Now here's hunting stands has this amazing concentration in Germany. And we're like, what is a hunting stand? This is a hunting stand. Um, it's a place where you hide and then I guess you shoot things from it. Um, so hunting stands are very popular in that region. You do see a little bit in the Midwest, which is what I would have kind of thought of. Um, I left the tag off of this one so you guys can guess. All right, so look, where is the distribution? It's, we've got a lot in the UK, got a lot in Ireland, Germany, some in Australia, Japan. Who, who says something? Boom, pubs, nice guess. And of course, pubs is a term, you know, this is specific to the term pubs. If we looked for bars, it would have a different distribution. I left the map off this one, but gave you the terms. Places of worship versus cafes. 
think about where you would expect this kind of distribution to happen around the world. It turns out that the American South is a very religious place. And of course, the Europeans love their cafes, like that parade bicyclist we saw earlier. Um, so this really tells much more than about road features or buildings. It's much more than that. It's about the people that live on top of the map and what they're interested in. Sometimes trends diverge, sometimes they converge. Here's fast foods versus toilet points of interest, which has an incredibly statistically significant correlation. Um, just like roads precede buildings, we see that fast food happens first, and then sometime later, people are interested in plotting something else. I'll let you think about why that might be. So I come back to this graph, this graph of contributors growing over time and trying to get a sense for what is happening, who are these people, how are they contributing. We broke this out into two different camps, the, the bottom 95% of contributors and the top 5%. When you look at the bottom 95% and look at their commits, you can see indeed it kind of follows that path up and to the right, a nice healthy growth. But when you look at it in context, you actually see that their commits are an order of magnitude smaller than the, the commits by the top 5%. A few users are contributing the vast majority of data to OpenStreetMap and helping push it forward. A lot of these users, the reason they have so many commits is because they're importing large data sets, um, which can be hard to source and hard to work with, so we thank you for doing that work. Um, we also know, because it's hard, that technology can help with this. Um, I'll show an example in a sec, we'll show a demo in a second of a tool that we made to help visualize the difference between two imported data sets and make it faster to concentrate on new features so that you know what to evaluate. I'm gonna load up this demo here and hand it over to Nick to demo. Here you go. Okay, so uh, just to explain what you're looking at quickly, thank you, Beth. Um, so this is the city of Seattle. It might not look like that unless you're very familiar with the city, but uh, this is what we're looking at. So everything you see here, uh, excuse me, let me step back for a moment. So this is actually Seattle in two points in time. We took a snapshot in late 2014, we took a snapshot in late 2013, and we decided to see what's changed. Well, everything in red is an arc that is solely in the 2014 data set. Everything in blue is something that's solely in the uh, 2013 data set. And everything in green is the intersection between the two. So we can actually look at, look at these roads changed very, very slightly, but these stayed the same. The shape of this building is totally different. And this is actually really, really easy to do because we're working with topologies here. So what that means is every arc only belongs to, uh, every arc is only drawn once. We keep a record of what shape it belongs to, and when there are shared lines or intersections, we know it right away. Very, very simple. So uh, also on, on the, uh, the topic of what's going on in OSM, this is something I threw together a little earlier today. So what you're looking at, uh, let me just let this play for you, is uh, what I like to call the center of mass of OSM. So for every single day of OSM, I looked at all of the edits that occurred. I then reduced all of those edits to, uh, to a single centroid. So it could have been a, a line, like a road, it could be a polygon, like a building. I brought it down to a point, and I essentially uh, did a weighted average of all of the lat-long pairs. So these points that you see are sized by the number of imports, and the location is, you know, the balancing point of OSM on that day. One really interesting thing that you notice, if I can just rewind this for a moment, is the, uh, the huge Tiger imports. This is government data that was brought into OSM in late 2007 through early 2008. And you can really see the mass being dragged towards the Americas at that point. Uh, just kind of reflecting uh, what was going on in OSM at that time. Uh, just a quick caveat, I know I said this is the center of mass of OSM. Uh, I actually plotted all of OSM and it turned out to be a really uninteresting chart. Uh, as it turns out, Europe is extraordinarily central and extraordinarily prolific, and that actually completely biased the data. If we were looking at all of OSM, it, this would just be a little dot moving around in Germany the entire time. So, uh, so I just dropped Europe entirely, and I think this looks a lot more interesting. So uh, 
Finally, I'd like to give you a sense of the different kinds of tags uh, we see around the world. And uh, please bear with me. This is all running off a cell phone data connection, so apologies if it's a little slow. So uh, Beth showed us some regional trends in, uh, in tags. So we can look at, say, um, I don't, yeah, thank you. Uh, so we were looking at uh, ristorantes earlier, which, uh, unless I'm mistaken, is the Italian word for restaurant. And we can see that, you know, that's where, in Europe, there are, there are quite a few of them. Um, or we can look at the same tags uh, looking differently in different places. So let's search for tacos. And as it turns out, in, in America, the yellow there is predominantly fast food. But we see in, in Mexico, certainly, those are just restaurants. Those aren't, uh, you know, Taco Bells we're looking at. Um, there are also really weird tags in OSM. One of the coolest things was just seeing what random things came up. So uh, tricycle stations are a thing. I was unaware that uh, people were really into tricycles, but evidently they are. And uh, strangely enough, it's Singapore that really, really likes tricycle stations. They have uh, the Philippines. Excuse me. Thank you, Beth. The Philippines. Uh, so yeah, they have a lot of them there. Kind of, kind of random. Uh, does anybody have any tags that they think have, might have interesting geographical you know, connotations to them? Anybody got, uh, got some thoughts? We're looking at all. Uh, keys of amenities here. It's about 72 million points. Oh, thank you, Beth. This is, uh, yeah, this is. From OpenStreetMap. Bike routes? Bike routes? That uh, bike a parking would be a point. Okay. Yeah, so we see, yeah, London, New York. How about, uh, try China, actually. That'd probably be kind of interesting, right? Not so much. Huh. Uh, how about how try pubs versus bars? Let's see uh, if that if that does anything. Pubs. Okay, so we see vast majority being there. Specifically, bars. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's actually great. So we could see. Uh, Oh, it's not. I'm going to bring back the search field. OK, technical difficulty. Sorry about that, folks. Religion? Oh, yeah. Let's do churches versus mosques. That's probably going to be an interesting geographical uh, thing right there, right? Uh, amenity. The, for the search field? Uh, yeah. Name, thank you. Name, thanks. All right, so yeah, there's there's the there's the Americas, and yeah, a lot more weight in Middle East, South Asia, Africa. Uh, sure. Uh, land use, land use. Uh, so we've only loaded, unfortunately, points in here. Land use is predominantly a polygon data set. Uh, yeah, this is uh, our upcoming version. We'll be able to deal with polygons, but we uh, didn't have the opportunity. I think we have to wrap up soon, but um, hopefully this has given you some insight into what people are adding to the map and how they're adding it, and how special OpenStreetMap is because of the, com the community that's contributing to it. We have a booth outside. Come and say hi, and we have five minutes for questions, and that's all we have. Thank you. What questions can I answer? Um, question? <laughs> Wait, I heard, OK. There's the voice. Can, can you do tailgating on this magic thing? Tailgating. Can you type in tailgating? <laughs> Tailgate? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, I need to click twice. Tailgate. You see a few? So, yeah. Here. Looks like Houston. Toronto, just not a lot. Well, let's see what the metadata on that is. Name, tailgate. Okay, that's not, that's not very interesting. 
We see, you see a lot of sparsity in OSM sometimes. <laughs> Tailgate Charlie's, which bar. is a bar. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, way back there. You showed us the um, user growth over time, uh, or user users over time. Do you have uh, new users over time, or active users over time chart or insight? Did you consider that? The chart, the nice up yeah, because, the right chart. Because that, that chart will always grow, right? Right, because community of users. It's just the sum of every user. They have actually really wonderful charts of general OSM statistics on the wiki page. It's taken from the OSM community wiki page that shows some of the data, shows feature growth, it shows new users and the breakdown between them. So there's a lot more than just what's here, um, but you could, we, I would recommend looking at that for that kind of statistics. No, Matt, I want to check. Don't worry. Don't worry. Like New York, Mountain Valley. Uh huh. Don't worry. And the subway? The subway? Yeah. So, the repeat the question. So yeah, uh, he was asking about subways on the map. Um, one really interesting thing I found was that uh, if you look at the predominance of uh, railway tags in New York, which is the, uh, the tag that's appropriate for that, you see actually just uh, regular old railroads actually by quite a bit outnumber subways, uh, which was really surprising to me because I know there's a lot of subways in New York City, but I was unaware that there are other rail lines. I guess Metro North, right? Long Island Railroad, that sort of thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. again, unfortunately, we only have points loaded into this right now. So we can only search on that. Yep. What's, uh, what's your vision for the, the tools you've developed here? They're pretty impressive, but do you see, uh, is this, uh, demonstration of, of some of your tool sets or you see this as uh, evolving into a, a more general purpose platform for, for analyzing OpenStreetMap data? Yeah, great. Um, so what you're seeing here, this is our enterprise tool. Um, it's built to be a very general exploration tool of your data. We make all the metadata fields, basically like columns in your data set, available to do this kind of thing, whether it's categorical charting or color by or size by with a, with a chart like that or to do search. Um, and this is really useful for people with large geographical data sets. So we work with mobile advertisers generating hundreds of millions of ad impressions or financial companies dealing with billions of transactions and want to see it across the world. Um, uh, but beyond that, we want to further the visualization of map data. And that's why we released our developer tools, which use take advantage of vector data and D3, kind of marrying those together to make it really easy to create amazing choropless or different ways to style the data based on the data. And so we hope that this will really push forward what people put on top of the map, not just what people put underneath the map as the base map. We have a question back there. <laughs> Carson, you want to do another search? Uh, we can see. <laughs> Top speed trap, surveillance, man-made. Looks like we could use more data. So if you could add those to the map, I know I would appreciate that. Looks like there's one near Chattanooga. Yeah. I think we have one room for one last question. Um, my question would kind of be, it's interesting from this perspective, you can see sort of what the priorities are geographically of what people are mapping. Um, would it make sense to be able to look at like the reverse of that and then maybe offer guidance for different areas of saying, uh, you guys might be, a, you know, you might be weak in this specific category for this particular area. So if you're going to add some stuff, you might want to consider these categories so that you have a more like leveled out uh, yeah, inventory. that's a really great idea. Um, this, this data is open data, and along with the, just the rendering libraries that we've made open source, we make 
open data like this available to developers to query and do that type of question and then figure out the answer the questions they're interested in. I think that'd be wonderful for pushing forward OpenStreetMap and finding the deficiencies in different areas. You could evaluate city by city or by continent and see what's missing and then just get the word out. Once people know that that needs to happen, they'll add more hunting stands <laughs> in other parts of the world or whatever needs to be added. All right, thank you. Come find us at our booth if you have additional questions or want to see more or do more queries like this. Thanks.